The Jag F-Type Convertible P450 rear-wheel drive. Now, this is their, let's call it mid-cycle refresh or facelift. And I was told that this car has gotten more sedate, more ugly, less exciting. And in this video, I'm gonna do my best to walk you through, first off, if this rear-wheel drive $73,000 base model F-Type is the best F-Type, and if they've ruined this car. So enjoy the video. Before we talk about the interior of the F-Type convertible, let's talk about the exterior. This car was introduced in 2014, and to all accounts, it was a very, very pretty car. Ian Callum, who did some of the Aston Martins and many of the contemporary Jaguars of the time, designed the vehicle, it looked beautiful. For this refresh, which came out about 2020, they went away from the original design. The front end is the biggest change. They've opened up the grill quite a bit and went to skinny front headlights. The rear taillights have also been changed. It's not my favorite thing in the world, but it is far from ugly. The interior space, they've done their best to refresh an aging car. They've gone to an all new infotainment, or let's call it not all new. It is the previous gen Jaguar infotainment. It's, let's call it, acceptably okay. It is touch. There is a good mix of physical and touch controls as well for it, but it is pretty slow to react. And it does, however, have wired Apple CarPlay. The Meridian audio system, this is the optional Meridian audio system, has some of the worst Bluetooth compression we've ever tested. It is like Mitsubishi Outlander levels of bad, which is not great because most of the time Meridian sound systems are excellent. The gauge cluster is all right. It is all digital. It's configurable. And it has reasonable responsiveness. The interior space, the seats are optional in this particular car. The car starts at $73,000. This vehicle we're driving is $84,000. Um, it is by no means the most expensive Jag interior. If you go up the F-Type line, they cover more things than leather. It's average. The seats are heated and cooled. They look pretty good. All of the controls have a reasonable tactileness to it. Let's call the general quality of this interior on par with something like a BMW 3 Series. My big con with this, to be honest, is actually the center screen. I'm not even talking about infotainment. I'm talking about indirect sunlight. With the roof down, you can have this car as Cooper convertible. You can't see the screen in direct sunlight. So if you're looking for navigation directions and you're on a busy street and you can't see it, it's kind of a pain. So with that, let's head in the shop and put this thing up on the lift. Does any Jaguar owner care about this? I know I don't, I just cashed in my Bed Bath & Beyond stock. I gotta get over and make my payment to the country club. I got some golfing to do, Jack, so finish this up quickly. Well, Mark, I was going to get engineering support from my Jaguar rep, but they were busy. So I will make this relatively short and cover what they changed. This is the refresh. That's because he's supposed to be meeting me. <laughs> At the driving range. Do you think he wants to talk to you about the little Kevlar covers and control arms and all that? I wouldn't. But Mark, it's a Jag. That's all you need to say. Let's get this thing out on the road. No, Mark, we're not going to get this thing out on the road right away. I'm going to talk about some engineering bits. What platform is this on? D14S. No, it's the D6A, Mark, which means this is still largely unchanged underneath. It's double wishbone front and rear, which makes a more premium sports car. All the, all the components underneath are also aluminum, like the knuckles, the control arms, the dampers, springs, bushings, rear knuckles, and rear ball joints are all new. They took some of the lessons they learned from the prior generation or pre-facelifted F-Type SVR to change some of the calibration, make it a little bit more compliant. This is the P450 rear wheel drive. And now, at least in the US, you have one engine the AJ Series 5 liter V8 from Jaguar. It still has a TVS style Eden blower. How much horsepower? You have two options, 444 horsepower in this P450, or in the all wheel drive R, you get 575. That's How much am I gonna get? None. Right All right, now. let's get this thing out on the road. No. The one we're underneath is the P450, which is the same motor with less boost. It still has a ZF eight-speed gearbox. It has a different calibration than the R. This is a little lazier, meant to not ruffle anyone's feathers. This still has adaptive dampers front and rear, and it has a clutch-based rear LSD. What you, will my barista think? Of your this? barista will think you are a wealthy man in your Jaguar. All right, let's get this thing out on the road. Okay.
We're not a Bond Country Club, Mark. In an F-Type. Jack. All right, let's do it. If I lose my hat again <laughs> from this. Oh! oh. <laughs> and that's why we're at the track, Mark. So what? I can do this. Well, you can I thought you could do this on the street. I can, but I'm worried about my license. Look. Is your water bottle in my door? Here, give pours me my... all over my land. I need a... That's what you get. And this is why you buy this car. The sound. Sound? What else? Because you can just go sideways at a whim or what? Yeah, there's a fun fact in this that... There's a level of comedy that exists in this car for seventy-three dollars to 80000 dollars that exists purely in the rear wheel drive model that is missing from other premium convertibles. And compared to something like an LC500, this is almost $30,000 less than the other convertible. You can do that all day long. Okay, so ask me. Jack, ask me. So what do you think of this car, Mark? Uh, you said 30,000 less than an all-seat convertible. Yes. All right, so. <laughs> okay, let's be real. Yes. <laughs> You are not driving like this, except maybe 1% of the time. No, all the time, Mark. You gotta be a big boy. You gotta be a big boy and drive like this all the time. All you're doing <laughs> is drifting this thing around and nobody is gonna do this. Nobody that owns a Jag is going to do this. Well, see, Mark, I'm trying to change that. If you buy one of these things, it's still, at least in the rear-wheel drive P50 model, still hemorrhoid soft. It is still understeers. Okay, I, I don't agree with you at all. I think you're enamored by the fact that it's got a loud V8 yes. and it goes sideways. That's all you care about, period. But it's comfortable. I, it, it, okay, it's got a worse interior than the LC. 30,000. I don't 30, care. 000. I don't care. If you have 70 or 80,000, you have 100,000 for an LC. It rides like ass over bad pavement. It, it, oh my God, bro. <laughs> Yeah? It doesn't ride as good. It's not as quiet. The interior is not as good. The sound system is horrible. This is an inferior car in every way to the LC convertible. It is a better sounding V8 to me. And it's, all it does is have an exhaust fart. That's it. The exhaust is more And a obnoxious. little bit of a supercharger one. Barely. I guess if you're looking for a budget LC convertible. Okay, you sold me. Okay, <laughs> it makes noise and it goes sideways. All right, but the end. <laughs> but it's a jag. Okay, bro. That's, that's this what, that's this what you reminds mean. me of a Walmart strip club. If Walmart opened up a strip club, that's about the, the appeal of no, this no, car. This is me. the this is the Challenger Hellcat convertible that has a higher credit, credit score than 392 and can read. That's why you buy this thing. Uh, and it's a jack. <laughs> so with that, Mark. <laughs> yeah, please, let's get to the final thoughts. Final thoughts on the F-Type P450 rear-wheel drive convertible. I'm gonna be honest, I had really low expectations for this car. I was told it was now softer, it didn't sound as good as the old one, and it wasn't as pretty. And I will say, in some ways, they have taken the edges off the F-Type. It is a much softer car, and it no longer cracks and pops all the time when you let off for overrun. But they have refined this vehicle. The suspension tuning is far softer, it's more comfortable, and I think it's understanding what it does better in the world, which is be a somewhat flawed GT car. It is hilarious in rear-wheel drive form. It goes sideways everywhere. It's still very, very loud, and it's plenty fast. At 444 horsepower, it's more than fast enough for your day-to-day -day driving. 
And honestly, I think at this price point, in the 73 to 80-ish thousand dollars, it's the right price for an F-Type. I wouldn't buy a more expensive variant. This is where this car belongs. It's not as sophisticated as some of the high-end Porsches. It may not be as nice inside as an LC500, but in many ways, it's more fun than both of those cars. Thanks for watching. I hope to see you soon.